Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing well. So Manchester United have beaten Fulham 3-1 in the end to seal our spot in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. We are going back to Wembley and at Wembley, Brighton await us in the semi-final. Man City against Sheffield United in the other semi-final as well. The FA Cup is truly heating up. And what an incredible second half it was at Old Trafford. Um, for 60, 65 minutes, Manchester United were outplayed by Fulham. Fulham with a better team. They had the lead through Mitrovic's goal in the second half. They could have gone 2-0 up thanks um, you know, to, a, to an attempt by Mitrovic, which was amazingly saved by David De Gea. It was an incredible save to keep Manchester United in the tie at that point. And then we saw... <sighs> A couple of minutes of madness, um, maybe not even minutes, a minute of madness from Fulham. It was absolutely incredible. We saw Jadon Sancho go through on goal. United hit them on the counter-attack. A good pass by Anthony to find Sancho. Sancho rounds the keeper. He keeps his composure, keeps his feet. He goes to slot it into the empty net and William comes across and clears the ball with his hand. It's a clear red card, clear penalty. But from that decision, you saw a domino effect of Marco Silva getting sent off for either encroaching into the VAR area or for something he said towards the referee, or maybe a mixture of both. So Marco Silva got sent off. And then as the referee's going over to give William a red card and give the penalty, Mitrovic comes in, gives him a little bit of a push, it was one of those things where they were in such close proximity to him. I think he's reacting to the red card. He's gone to grab the referee without really thinking. He's just protesting. He's seen his manager go mad on the sidelines. He's probably reacting to that as well. It was a red card. You don't put your hands on the referee. But it was just mental to see and mental to see the red cards just coming out left, right and centre in a matter of a minute. It took four minutes for all that to kind of settle down and, and Bruno Fernandes to take the penalty, which gave Manchester United the equaliser. Um, a good penalty from Bruno, especially given the long wait that he had, the composure he had to keep. It was a very good play by Bruno Fernandes. He also got the third goal for Manchester United, which was a very good strike on the break. United playing against nine men at that point. And the winner for United, coming from Marcel Sabitza, Literally 30, 40 seconds after the ball went in the back of the net from the penalty. Um, some good work from Jaden Sancho. Look, I don't think anybody from United really covered themselves in glory today. I don't think we were very good. I think Fulham bossed the game for 60 minutes, had a deserved lead. Now look, we go back level for a penalty, although it should have been a goal anyway if it's not a penalty because it's going into the back of the net. Do you know what I mean? So either we're 1-1 and we're playing against 11 men or we get a penalty and we're playing against 10 men if Mitrovic and Marco Silva don't lose their head. And we're probably still going to go through anyway. Playing against 10 men at Old Trafford, the tie is potentially going to extra time if we don't score the winner. We were probably going through anyway. But we were poor for 60-odd minutes. Do you know what I mean? Until that goal. Um, and we were obviously helped by them losing their heads and going down even further to nine men. Um, Fulham fans must be scratching their heads thinking... How the hell did that happen? How did that go so wrong so quickly? And Manchester United fans are looking forward to another trip to Wembley. A semi Look, I prefer the semi-finals when they were at Villa Park and Old Trafford. Obviously, Villa Park for Manchester United. We get a bigger allocation at Wembley and all those kind of things, which is good. But another trip to Wembley, another semi-final. We've won the Carabao Cup. We're in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. If we beat Sevilla, which is a difficult tie, you've got another semi-final to look forward to. We're doing really, really well. We're still on for a cup treble. But the performance today was not much to write home about. We had a little bit of luck with Fulham losing their heads. Um, and, you know, we a great save from David De Gea keeps it 1-0 uh, rather than 2-0. Um, it was a poor performance. And I think Ten Hag will hopefully use that performance as something to dig into the boys over the international break and when the players return and get, like, just awaken them. Um, I thought the game changed for us when we took McTominay off, funnily enough. I, I don't rate him in the middle of the park. I don't think he's good enough. We need to re replace him and improve the team um, in that midfield area. Um, I would possibly contemplate keeping Sabitzer as a squad player, bringing in another key signing in midfield as well. He wouldn't be my only signing. Um, but hopefully in the, in the semi-final against Brighton, 
we'd have to perform a lot better than that. And you'd hope Casemiro's fit because the midfield as well. Um, we're looking a little bit thin in there without Casemiro and without Ericsson. Um, but the, I thought the game changed when McTominay went off um, and Anthony came on. Anthony did okay when he came on. Um, a good pass to set up Sancho, which eventually led to the red card and the penalty as well. Um, and I think ultimately probably would have won the game without Mitrovic losing his head on that. But wow, incredible, incredible seeds at Old Trafford and United are, are through. Um, we go into the international break now. Um, obviously, some good results in, in terms of Southampton drawing with Spurs in the league for us because at one point South, uh, sorry, Spurs were going to overtake us in the league table. So it's good to see you know, that didn't happen while we, we we had a break from Premier League football. Um, we are still sitting in third in the league. We've got a difficult game after the break though against Newcastle. One that you think if you can go to Newcastle away and win that, pretty much puts to bed any doubts about top four for Manchester United and potentially being in a battle. But if you go there and lose it and you go there and perform like we did today, we got no Casemiro again, you'd worry because Newcastle at home with their fans behind them, Difficult place to go, and they're a very good team that don't concede many goals. Um, but you'd hope that the performance would be a bit better from Manchester United because that was poor today. And maybe it's a you know a combination of fatigue and things catching up with players, um, missing Casemiro as well, which I think is a key one. Um, but there wasn't it wasn't a great performance up until that red card, um, and we need to perform much better after the break. After the international break it is the the final slug towards the end of the season when we still in the Europa League have an FA Cup semi-final at Wembley to look forward to against Brighton who uh, I know Muggs it's going to be a very very difficult game I'm a bit wary of that one um, and then you've got still your top four places cement so a good end to the season coming up but I think some warning signs today that we have to we have to perform a little bit better because uh, Fulham did well they were the better team up until you know that penalty decision um, and on another day, United are two 0 down, and you never know what happens. Willian keeps it off the line with his stomach. They don't get a red card. United don't get a penalty, and you go out. Um, so we need to perform a lot better. But buzzing, buzzing with the result, buzzing with another trip to Wembley. Cannot wait for that. And it sets up. Although again, as I said, I'm not taking my eyes off the ball with um, with with Brighton. It sets up a potential FA Cup final against Manchester City as well. Don't want to write off Sheffield United. Anything can happen, and we've seen uh, any anyway, the Wigan beat City in a final at one point. So anything can obviously happen, but you'd assume City would go through against uh, Sheffield United, and if United can get through against Brighton, I think that one. United are favourites, but only just, only just difficult game. They're a difficult team. The likes of Matoma, Welbeck, and all that. Sets up an interesting tie. Anyway, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you're keeping it locked. I'll have my laptop back hopefully next week so I'll get back into the regular swing of things with content. And as you can see, this edit is a bit is a bit rushed. But yeah, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you're keeping it locked. Also, do me a favour. Um, I did some work with Jameson this week. Um, I've put the link to the reel that we made um, on Instagram. If you can go over there and hit the like button on that, that would do me a massive favour. See you in a bit.